Hello everybody. This video is going to serve as a welcome and introduction to the fall 2021 semester. We do have four parts. In this first video, we'll basically give a general introduction, what the class is, how it's going to work. This is an asynchronous class. We're going to focus on that presentation, how we'll actually operate. In part two, that will be class specific. Each class will go and watch one that'll go through a lot more specific details, go through the syllabus, offer a lot more information as far as, you know, being ready, being prepared, what to expect, all kinds of things specific to the, to the class, as well as some advice. Part three will be very specific with regard to testing, how you'll be graded, what we'll actually do as far as our tests and submission policy. And then finally, the fourth, we'll finish this with our first assignment. Now, Overall, through all four of these videos, this is really, again, just to make sure you're comfortable and you understand what this class is about. So, get a little comfy. You may want to have a little sheet of paper just as you go along in case there are any questions. So, at the end, if there's something that's unanswered that you could send it to me and make sure you get that answer. But again, for this first day of class, which really is for us, that Wednesday, Wednesday is the first day of classes for the whole school, this serves for our first week. So again, to make sure you're familiar, how is this going to work? So first thing, this is asynchronous, okay? What that means is that there are no live class sessions. This class is gonna be based around three components. Four, if you count the textbook itself, you certainly wanna use the textbook, but basically three main components. We're going to use Blackboard, your QCC email, and YouTube, okay? Blackboard, let's start there. Blackboard is our information hub. You can go on Blackboard and get pretty much anything you need from the class. If you go there today, again, first day of class, I already have an announcement, just a few generic things, making sure you check your email, making sure you're familiar with how to get access to these videos so you can go through and you know be aware of what's going on. So announcements, as we go further into the semester, announcements, any tests, any other important information, I'll always post there. On the side of Blackboard, when you go down the side, you have several tabs. Under the course documents, that's where you can find information like your syllabi. Uh, sometimes there'll be other things. When we eventually get to tests and quizzes, they will also be posted under the course documents tab. Under the course assignments, that's where you'll find all of your homework. But to realize your homework comes from the textbook. That would just be the list of homework problems. They would be organized by section, page number, things of that nature. So you'd have your assignments tab. And then last is the course outline tab. The course outline is where you'd find most of the, I guess, more necessary information. That's where you would have the links to videos like this. You'd also have access to the class notes that go with it. So those, like I said, those are the three big components. Your QCC email, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. When you email me, you could send whatever email account you want, and if I reply back, I will just reply to that email account. But as far as the weekly information, and again, when I send you tests and some other things, I only have access to all of you through Blackboard, and that connects to your QCC email. So you need to make sure, that's the first message on the announcements, is to make sure you got the first email, and that as we continue, that you will get my weekly emails. So, how does that work? Basically, again, this is asynchronous. We do not have any set times that we are going to work. So you need to set your own schedule. And then in the part two, as we get to each class, we'll talk more about setting a good schedule, how many hours, some expectations, but just to realize, so you are going to set your own schedule. Most of these classes in a regular semester would be meeting twice a week. Again, we'll offer some suggestions. Maybe you wanna do something similar. Maybe you wanna have some alternatives but it would be up to you as to when you want to proceed. But what I'm going to do is on Sunday night, before the beginning of Monday, Monday is the beginning of the week, so I want to make sure before Monday begins, you have an email from me with all the information for the week. So like I said earlier, you can go on Blackboard and find these information, the links and the notes under the course outline tab, but in the email I send, all that information will be there. You'd have the video links, you'd have any uh, homework that's been assigned, anything along those lines, but you also would get more. You'll get some suggestions about pacing. You'll get some reminders about schedule. 
it's, it's kind of like if we're meeting in person, I typically start class with those same types of reminders. What we've been doing, where we are, and where we're going. So that's a really good helpful aspect. So you would get that, that email, and then it's up to you to set your schedule for the week. You wanna go through, watch all the videos. That is one of the big things, everybody. I'm gonna come back and talk more about the videos and YouTube in just another second, how I make them, but videos are class. People say, well, what do I have to do? It's like, that is first and foremost. If we were in person, we would talk about the importance of being in person and being in class. Well, in this online asynchronous situation, you need to be watching the videos. Now, all the videos, if you already noticed, this is posted under the username QCC Sponza. That's my last name, S-P-O-N-Z-A, and you know, QCC for Queensboro Community College. So QCC Sponza. All my videos are loaded under that username. If you go and look around, there's a whole bunch of videos already there. If you go onto the playlist, you could find each specific, the videos for those classes listed separately together. They're all pretty much linked either by unit or by section in the textbook. So as we go along, that'll also help you find them. But again, each week I will be sending you an email with direct links to those exact videos. And same thing, you could find them under the course outline tab as well. When I make these videos, these are not just instructional videos. You know, we'll talk about outside of resources them a little bit later as well. And you know, there's a lot of information on YouTube as well as other places as well. And you could find very direct how-to videos, X, Y, Z, follow these steps, and they guide you through all kinds of stuff. These videos are more than that. I've really taken a lot of time, energy, and effort to organize and structure these videos so that they feel like class. I've almost been teaching college for 20 years now, so I've really tried to incorporate what might you want to know. And I really always am very, very direct. Sometimes in a class, we want to just talk about how something gets used, make a connection, make a reminder. But I would always be very, very clear. This is what you need to know. This was just some good information. That's just something that might help, might make something a little more interesting. But I'm always very clear cut on what it is that you need to know, what it is that you are responsible for. When we talk about testing in a little bit more, you know, you're gonna have take home tests. I'll say it now, we've got a lot more to say about that. But I need to see work. That'll be one thing we keep emphasizing. When I grade you, it's not just having the right answers. I'm testing to see, are you using the same technique? Are you doing it correctly? So you need to show me some work. That'll be another thing in the videos. There'll never be any ambiguity. Well, how much is enough? What do I need to show? If you're watching the instructional videos, that's always very, very clear. Background. You know, some of our classes, you know, you need a little more background. I'll give you those reminders. I'll point those things out. So again, the videos are very, very much like if we were in class together. Now, you can ask questions, but I, again, through my experience, I try and anticipate questions. Where are common places people make mistakes? Be clear, you're doing this for this reason, not just because you're getting lucky. You know, I really, really work hard to make sure all those points are clear. Now, you still may have some questions, and of course, we still have other ways to get information. Just like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, you keep some notes, we will talk more about note taking as well. There's a lot to say today. But you know, always should have some notes. And if you have questions, ask. You know, if you were in person, you would ask while we were in class. If you're watching the video, you jot it down and you could always send me an email and still ask. So again, those videos, you really want to make sure you're taking best advantage and using them to their full potential. How long are the videos? Some of them are broken into separate parts. There's a lot of different reasons for that, everybody. Some of it is just simply like, you know, I was going to record these videos yesterday, but there was construction outside my house. So there's a jackhammer going on. You know, that's part of why asynchronous works well for a lot of people, because there's a lot of other obstacles. There's other people in your house you don't know. Other people are trying to use the computer at the same time. You have problems with the internet. Sometimes there's outside noise. Whatever the reason is, asynchronous works very well for a lot of people to overcome a lot of those obstacles. Now, there's pros and cons to this. So let's, let's start thinking about that. So we've already stated out the nature of the course. Asynchronous, no live sessions, you get your weekly email. 
Oftentimes you'll get more than one email from me in a week. So that's again why you want to make sure you're checking your QCC email or at least setting up some sort of a forward system. Other students ask questions. Sometimes I want to share that. Again, just like in class, someone asks a good question. I want the whole class to hear that. I might post that. Not in, you know, I want you to feel comfortable asking questions. I will put names attached to it, but to share, this was a good question, here's a good response, something you might have thought about as well, so make sure we share that information with the class. So you're checking your email, you're watching your videos, you're completing your homework, and we'll also talk a little bit more about the book. This is college, you should be at a point that you're using a textbook more, for the, more than just the homework problems that are inside of it. Each of these classes, you know, there's more you can get out of it, and we want to talk about that. So reading over the textbook, reading over the sections, looking through examples, doing homework. That's your basic week. How you grade it, again, something else we'll talk more specifically to each individual class, but just to tell you right now that it's going to be based off your tests, quizzes, your final exam. Homework is for your own preparation, okay? So. What are some of the goods and the bads? Well, some of the bad parts first. Let's start with that. For me, one of the worst parts is I don't get to meet you. I want to be perfectly upfront and honest. I like an in-person experience. I like having the opportunity to get to meet a new class. You know, students have different habits, have different backgrounds. Even if you teach the exact same subject, there's a lot of new interesting things that can come up. And then for you guys, you know, sometimes some of that mixes. You have chances to meet other people. Sometimes that kind of helps out with some study groups and maybe it's not just for this class, but you meet other people that help give you information for other classes. So that is a little bit of a loss. There's, there's less conversation. Now, that doesn't mean there's none. Like I keep saying, I want these classes, these videos, I should say, to feel like class. So again, it's not just the cut and dry. You do this, you do this, you do that. We want to talk about the big picture. Why are you here? How does this connect to the world? How does this connect to different fields? Are you being tested on that? Or is that just good information for you to know? All those things continue to come up. And if you do have more questions, again, you can always ask. And that's what I mean, like sometimes sharing that. Maybe it's not a specific question about a problem in class. Maybe it's more of a, how does this connect? You know, as we're going through this pandemic, we've definitely had questions. How do scientists make this connection? And those are things that I definitely like to be able to share with you. Maybe it's not COVID related, there's plenty of other situations and examples, but that's a great thing to be able to share. So certainly if you have questions like that, you can ask. Um, on top of that, I used to be a part of the math department student mentoring committee. So sometimes it's a natural part of class. Students have other questions about other classes. How does this connect to another math class? What comes next? Maybe it's a little bit more of a question about a career, about transfer. I'm still happy to answer all those questions. So some of these things, as I'm pointing out, they're slight negatives, but they're not bad. They're still things you could still get good answers to. So they're very, very minor inconveniences, to be quite honest. What's something else that's not great? Well, I just pointed out that you're being graded based off of your tests. And I've already told you that you'll have take-home tests. This is where some people start getting these ideas about like, well, there's other outside resources. They're already starting to think about what they can get away with. I gotta tell you right now, that's the terrible, terrible approach. And it almost always comes back to hurt you in the long run. You wanna get into good habits here. You know, you're in this class for a reason. What is that reason? Again, each specific class we'll talk more about why, what majors, why you're here, what you're supposed to get out of this. But there are reasons. You want to get stuff out of it. You want to get something out of this class. You start taking advantage of outside resources that you're not supposed to. Well, in some ways, you're almost shooting yourself in your, in your own foot. You're not getting what you're supposed to out of this class. And even if you happen to make it through here, it comes back to get you later on. So let's, let's stay away from that. Again, we'll talk more about how outside resources, what's good, what can kind of be helpful. But the first and foremost thing is to think inside of the class. Use the videos, use your book, do your homework. That's the approach you want to take. Um, a quick aside, 
we've already had pressure to have more in-person classes. You know, as this pandemic has continued and online has been an excellent resource for a lot of people, but I hope you see, I mean, you go look around the country, there are a lot of colleges that have already fully open in person. And for those that haven't, there's a lot more pressure to do so. So sooner or later, we are going to be basically back full time in person. Online will always be an option, but not to the same extent that it is now. So you want to develop good study habits. You want to be a good student. This is a fall semester. A lot of students, you know, starting a fall, students who are just coming out of high school. The adjustment from high school to college is not easy. There's more that's expected of you in college outside of the classroom. Right, That ratio of how much time you spend, well even if the amount of time you spend is the same, the ratio of time spent inside the class versus outside, college has a lot more of that outside. So you want to start getting some of those adjustments so it's not a, if you do go back to a full in-person semester, maybe in the spring, you don't want it to be another like, wow, you just fell into the deep end of the swimming pool. You want to be able to, uh, to be ready to make some good adjustments. So that's actually one of the goods of this situation. There's a lot of ways that you can prepare and get some extra advantage, but still be ready for in-person. Still be thinking about good habits, good study habits, good overall preparation. So now let's talk about some of the good stuff. What are some of the extra good things about this class? Well, review videos. I mean, having access to these videos is going to be huge. I mean, again, thinking about in person, most of these classes you're meeting twice a week. And just think about reality, how there are days where maybe you're a little exhausted, you're a little sick, you're under the weather, you're a little beat up, you didn't have a good night's sleep, you had a rough day at work, you had a rough day of travel, you had a big test. I mean, there are just so many things that are going on in our lives. There's so much responsibility and just stuff happening that there's so many good reasons to show up to a class and not be at 100%, to be a little tired, to be exhausted. But when you're in person classes, you have to be there. That's where the good instruction happens. And if you've only got 20 minutes of brain power and you've sit through an hour and a half, a two hour class, there's a good chance that you've missed a lot. But with these videos, this is where, again, if you have good planning, if you have these situations come up and you just say, wow, I'm just, I'm shot. I really, really just, I'm not getting it today. I'm just too tired, I'm too exhausted. You stop, you pause, and you come back to it another time. Maybe you come back to it later that day, you go get something to eat, you take a nap, maybe it's just you plan and you come back tomorrow when you're fresh and ready. It really allows you a lot of opportunity. So that's just, just being tired, being exhausted. Now, um, on top of that, again, especially like the Calc 2 class, a lot of these classes, you're meeting two and a half hours. That's tough. You know, maybe it's just the, the length of the class that at the end of class, you're not as sharp as you were at the beginning. So it's just not as easy to keep it, you know, to be ready and have that recall. So another opportunity to just, again, pause, take a break. Maybe you don't do all the videos on one shot. Maybe you do some, you do an hour and you realize like, okay, that's kind of enough for today. I think I need to take a break and then to come back to it. Excellent advantage. Another thing that comes up with respect to note taking, you need to take notes, okay? And if we were in person, we would talk a lot about the people who, the two extremes, the people who copy any and everything, every little mark that goes up on the board. I accidentally have a little scratch mark on the board, it's in their notes. They are so obsessive about getting everything into their notes, but they're working so hard to get everything written down that they don't have the time to actually listen they're missing a lot of the conversation. So they've got a bunch of notes, but they never put any of the ideas behind what that is actually telling them. On the flip side of that, you have the other people who don't take any notes. They wanna listen, they wanna watch, and they're getting everything on the board and they are absorbing, but then at the end of class, they never copied anything down. So you know, even if you remembered everything perfectly in class, you go home, you go to do some homework, you forget a little something or you forget a big something, but without any notes to go back to, it really makes things tough, 
That's such a common complaint in a math class. People say, oh, I understood everything perfectly in class and then I couldn't do it when I come home. Very often, that's a sign you're not taking good notes. You need to make notes that are useful for yourself. So, what's an advantage of this, in per of this uh, online asynchronous situation? I give you every single note. When, when we get to the instructional parts, I actually have my desk set up. I've got an arm over my desk. So you'll see my hand. You won't see my face in those videos. You'll see my hand writing notes and you'll hear my voice, but you'll get all of those notes. I send them to you. Now the notes by themselves, you know, I've had a student or two ask, like, I don't understand the notes. You need the videos. I mean, if you're just looking at the notes, that's like walking into a classroom and a professor didn't erase the board. And there's just a whole bunch of notes up there, but if you weren't there watching the class, those notes mean very, very little. But if you are watching the videos and you have those notes accessible, well, that gives you several advantages. Number one, again, I don't take these videos down. So you could always keep going back. Maybe it's you're studying for a test and you're like, wait a second, I'm really stuck on this part. You can go back and go back to that video again. And maybe you don't wanna rewatch the whole thing, you could skip to a particular problem. Well, you've got the notes. So you've got a sense of like, well, he did this problem in the middle of the notes, so I could kind of skip to the middle of the video. Find that problem. Watch me go through it again. Um, another quick advantage of these videos, some students in class, they feel like they get it. They want to test themselves. So maybe after we do one example together, you want to test yourself. I put up another example in the video. Pause the video you go do the problem. And then you get to unpause the video, you get to see step by step, hey, am I on the right track? Did I do things correctly? Hopefully the answer is yes, but if not, you've got the video. There's a lot of little ways to make these things useful and helpful. I would suggest still taking more notes than just my notes. I like to point out that, you know, you have my notes accessible to so some people, you like to print out my notes, watch the videos, and then you add your own descriptions on the side. You know, you put it in your own terms. That's not a bad thing at all. But again, to just have my notes and have nothing else to it, again, you're still kind of limiting yourself in some way. I definitely want to point this out. As we get more and more technology and more people, you know, they type notes and they like to listen. And a lot of us, there's a lot of different ways people learn. But a big thing is that your hand and your brain connect. When you write things down, there's like extra neural pathways that fire, and there's extra connections, and it helps with memory retention. So for some people, this is not for everybody, but for some people, you know, they go through the video, they take their notes, and then on a side, as a part of their study, they rewrite out their notes. That's not just for math, that's for other classes as well. And a good reason for doing it, well, number one, organization. Your notes are supposed to be helpful. So sometimes in class, again, things can get a little chaotic. You're trying to do a lot of things at once, even with the videos. Even if you're using my notes, maybe you want to reorganize them in some way. Maybe you want to have like topics versus problems and have those things clearly separated. You know, there's a lot of different reasons. So rewriting your notes is not a bad thing, but just in general, writing some things out, writing out directions, writing out a problem. Again, those things help with recall. When you're in a testing scenario, again, especially in person, you don't have access to your books and things, but that can really help you recall. So lots and lots of positives. Again, we still have a lot more to talk about the testing situation, how much time, what are some good habits, but you will see that testing scenarios still favor you, that there's a lot of good things that help in this, in this asynchronous setup that I have. So we still have a little bit more of like the good and bad to talk about, but overall, we've really, really said a lot. And I really hope overall, I want to point out that there has been a lot of good success with this setup, that the previous few semesters, I've been doing exactly this scenario. And during the semester, at the end of the semester, I have a lot of students who really, really like this setup. Students who math is not their strong point, and that this allows them a lot of opportunities to go back and to really boost their grade. So I really hope we can take advantage of this. There's just one last thing I just realized I wanted to say just before we move to part two. And again, we'll go specifically 
each individual class. A lot of general information, like I keep saying, the asynchronous setup, the weekly emails, Blackboard is your hub, check your email overall, um, YouTube, and that's the last thing I wanna come back to. I just wanna make it clear. Sorry, it's just a siren I'm waiting. Okay, I have no specific allegiance to YouTube. I do just wanna make that very, very clear. YouTube is just another one of those conveniences. You know, some of you through, maybe you've already had some of these online experiences, and Blackboard, for one, Blackboard has some hiccups. So, uh, I, and I'm sorry, second thing, you do not have to print anything for this class. If you want to print, there's a lot of opportunities to do so. Some people print everything. They print all my notes. They print out their tests. They print out any note sheets, reviews. They could really end up printing out a lot, but you don't have to. You'll notice in just a little bit as we go through the syllabi, I'm gonna go through them on my computer. You don't have to print out anything. You don't need a printer. But just back to Blackboard, Blackboard is all about convenience. You know, I'm sorry, YouTube. Blackboard we have access to, but you'll notice Blackboard has hiccups. Blackboard will sometimes have these shutdowns you can't have access. There's some annoyances that come up. YouTube is such a large, website with so much backing behind it in the year and a half that I've been doing it I don't think I've seen blackboard on uh, deactivated for more than like a total of a half an hour if they have a problem they fix it pretty darn quickly so that's a really really good advantage of YouTube secondly you know you could access YouTube from almost anywhere anything that connects to the internet you could go to YouTube and it's pretty friendly you could watch your videos and get access but on top of that, you know, YouTube has its own separate application on your smart TV, on your iPad, on any type of uh, uh, any type of like smartphone device. You know, YouTube has its own special app, so it gives a lot of extra extra bonuses. The second thing I want to point out, YouTube also does a good job of subtitling. Pretty much within 24 hours after I post a video on the main YouTube app, it's kind of typically on this like uh, lower right corner, there's this CC button. It opens up closed captioning, your subtitles. So for some people, you know, you're watching my videos, but maybe there's other distractions. Maybe there's other people talking. Maybe you're in a crowded place. You know, if you've got an earbud, that can help. But if you don't, sometimes just opening up the subtitles to make sure you're seeing what I am saying, that you don't miss anything. For some students, English as a second language, that could also be a little extra added bonus. So again, YouTube, it's nice. It's got a lot of resources. You know, there's a lot of other good stuff there. But just to be clear, I'm just using it for convenience. That's, that's the biggest thing. Okay, everybody, so like I said, there was a lot in this first video, a lot of good information, but we're not done. Make sure you get through parts, uh, videos two, three, and four, video two, the specific video to your class, video three, specific to talking about testing, how you're going to submit your tests and quizzes, and then part four, the fourth video, we're gonna briefly have a very short first assignment for this first week. Okay, everybody, make sure to check out the next video.